All right, fans, welcome to another edition of In Conversation here on Rock Show Critique. And today we have <laughs> a really special guest here for us, none other than Joel here from Sewin. Welcome. Thank you. Nice to be here. Yes. All right. So you guys uh, coming out with this new album, uh, Memorial. Uh, it is coming out here September 1st, which is right around the corner. Uh, yeah, give us give us a quick uh, rundown on the album. This is uh, man, I, I've heard it for the first time. I had to play it like four more times right away because it was so good the first time around, and it just gets even better with each listen. Mm, yeah, thank you. No, it's uh, it's our uh, let's see, it's our sixth sixth studio album now, and uh, I think it's sort of. It follows like a you know if if you have, if you hear Lo Lotus and then Imperial and then now you hear Memorial, you kind of get get it. It's like a linear development in the sound. Uh, it's getting harder. It's getting more metal, um, and uh, just overall, I, I just have to say I'm really proud of this album. I think it's it's the best we have done. Um, so it's it's uh, it's it's so great to have it out now. Um, few singles. Yeah, I guess guess people have heard uh, um, our first, you know, Unbreakable and Unmemorial that it's out, and now it's just exciting to to see what people think of it. Uh, yeah, you, yeah, you met, yeah, you mentioned Unbreakable. Uh, it's one of the clear standouts right away, um, and the first single. Uh, so you can see mm. why it was chosen. Uh, give us a rundown about the, the the song itself and what it's about. Unbreakable is a song uh, much about, you know, uh, that, you know, be being um, to, to, to just follow your, your, uh, your beliefs blindly uh, in a way, or like it's, it's a, it's a way of, you know, how you, how you justify your, um, how you justify your deeds, uh, not necessarily good deeds, you know, mm -hmm. you, you, you get it like almost like dissonance, uh, you know, that how, how people tend to, um, uh, to find a moral justification for what they do and, 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 and their, and their deeds basically. Now, that's, you... that's, that's, the theme, you know, yeah. Yeah. So when you guys when you guys write a song, how how do you how do you go about doing it? Do you just like one guy bring the song to the band? Do you guys kind of just write it like as a unit? How does it all come about? Yeah, no, no, the normal sewing way is uh, Martin is sort of you know the he's 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 working a lot. He's working you know he's doing a lot of ideas. So he makes he makes a bunch of ideas. He comes over to my place, uh, and then we start working on on vocals and start working on you know getting it into a into a whole song, and then uh, everyone contributes with their you know with their knowledge and and builds the song from that. So, but usually that's that's the way we we work. We can work in uh, different ways too, but but you know. It's, it's it shows that that's that's a good work method for us now right. does one person usually write the lyrics or does everybody contribute to the lyrics themselves it can be like it can be a con contribution from many people um but then again it's i would say it's also you know martin writes a lot uh i, I write some you know so it's it's Lars has some contributions. Cody does. So you you know we try to pitch in, mm -hmm. but but you know we, there has to be a, a solid idea. Uh, it mm -hmm. cannot be like you know, it has to work. It has to be so in everything we do, of course. Yeah. Now, one thing I noticed on this new album compared to your other ones, it seems like you guys kind of intentionally try to keep the songs a little bit shorter in length as opposed to the past. Cause in the past, obviously you had a lot of six minute, five minute. This time there's only one song that cracks uh, over five minutes, which is the last song vitals. 
Um, was there was that intentional to keep the song shorter in length? Uh, it, I think it. We have intentionally um, went, you know, went in a direction within progressive metal that is sort of we've we've been reaching the metal corner because of, because of many other progressive metal bands tend to get uh, more technical and uh, more progressive, more art rock with every album, maybe softer as well. We 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 just feel that you know that's that's not that's not what Soman is supposed to do. We 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 feel that you know we want to represent metal within the progressive metal genre. To really when you go to a Soan show you're supposed to feel almost like a metal show mm -hmm. in the intensity and the power and and that that kind of thing because that's that's where we all come from uh, originally you know that's what i used to love uh, when i was a teenager you know so i don't want to lose that i don't want it to become like uh this this be this thing that we play for a sitting audience in a in an auditorium uh, and everyone is, uh, you know, <laughs> mm, mm -hmm, mm, interesting. You know, no, I I just want a crazy fucking crowd that also is in love with music like we are. You know? Exactly. Exactly. Uh, tell us about that last song on the album, Vitals. Uh, uh, closes out the album. Uh, very uh, softer track. Um, how did that <laughs> one come to be? And uh... It was... I mean, as you can see, it's just just has a di total different mood and different vibe than than everything else. And and I think uh, we just felt that it would be fantastic to have a, a song like that to close the album with, then something that just breaks off the mood completely or the the the, the change change of setting, you know, in a way. Um, and it's also um, it's written by Lars, so it has a different flavor. Definitely, def definitely, you know, he's more, he's more jazz rock oriented in a way. So, um, and and I, I just love that kind of stuff. You know, I like, you know, I used to love when I listened to Fate No More albums, and and when there was just a completely different song in the middle of the album, or at the end of the album, or you know, something that just gave you uh this shook your mind a bit you know um yeah. i love that and it's a great song it's a very very great song oh definitely I, I love the way it closes out the album um definitely now and there's another track on here that's very interesting um it's like a duet here um hollowed uh tell us about mm -hmm. who the other singer is and uh, how you guys came with uh, came up with that great song the other singer is is called elisa uh she is quite big in Italy. She's, you know, she's she's famous. She plays for ten thousand people in, you know, arenas there in Italy, and and uh, she's rock oriented more. Or, or nowadays, she's even doing pop music and things like that. Mm -hmm. She's, but she's has she is a fantastic artist with a fantastic output. Uh, she she just blows me away. Uh, the thing was, you know, we we just we work with an Italian booking agency, and they work with her as well. So when, when we found out uh, that you know that 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 they were working with her, then I had to ask them to to uh, to, to invite her to our album, and she she said she said she said yes. So it's fantastic. It's, it's, um, so it's it's just a great honor to have her on the album. I know she has been doing duets with Muse, for example, and mm. other bands too. The the duet with the the with Muse is fantastic too. So I'm just honored to have her on the album. So was that uh hallowed? Was that written with a duet in mind, or is that something that came about later on? Did you decide to add it in there? It was written uh like a you know as a duet. And it was not particularly written for her, but we knew it was gonna was gonna be me and a female counterpart. Mm -hmm. uh, so that the whole ballad was written like that, and then we just found the, a very good match for it. <laughs> so yeah, 
That's right. Yeah, it's definitely another standout on the album. I mean, I don't think there's a song that doesn't stand out. I really, uh, I was amazed at how how great you know track to track everything flows nicely and and the way you know you close out with vitals definitely like you said it's memorable it keeps things in, in uh, ending on a great note there um do you do you have any particular favorite songs on the album for yourself um i not really you know they i i love them all um i think fortress is a song that kind of uh what do you call it it's like an underdog song you know it's it's you know may perhaps not the immediate hit on the album but it just stands out in a great way it just gives me a good vibe when i listen to it so right now that that has i i and i should say that's my favorite at the moment but it's gonna be a new one tomorrow <laughs> <Another one. laughs> now do you guys have an idea what the what the next single will be released yeah, at this yeah. point. Yeah. Next single will be out in about a week. Okay. But I want the surprise. So you just, okay. you know, yeah. you have to get gotcha. it. All right. <laughs> but it's coming out. So that's cool. You get, you get a video for that one as well. There's uh, going to be video. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Cool. Yes, definitely. All right. Uh, tell us about the uh, album cover itself. Definitely a little unique and it definitely really stands out. That's the one thing, you know, when you were younger, you always see, oh, look at this cool album cover. And know, a lot of right? times it would make you buy it, you know, because the album cover just stood out so great. Uh, tell us about how you guys came up with that idea for it. Yeah. I mean, just just a comment on that, you know, I'm, we're, we are still like an album band because that's that's how I grew up too. You know, I, I was, you know, sitting with a vinyl, listening to music and, and you, you had that cover and then you were reading every bit of, of the that cover and that that gave you your whole image of the music and it was just fantastic um i know people don't do that anymore you know it, modern artists doesn't like do albums like that but we're, we're stubborn so we're going to keep doing it because we like it you know uh but album cover yeah it's it's it sort of represents you know big bits you know how 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 in a very dark and, and post-apocalyptic world you still uh, need to take care of each other and the love you can have you know uh, if 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 you stick together in a, in a in a difficult situation basically you know the whole the whole times we are in right now it's is pretty uh, it's it's gloomy times it's dark times. Uh, with uh, uh, Russia's invasion of Ukraine, mm -hmm. um, with populist leaders in Europe, we have, you know, it doesn't look really good. You know, it looks like a lot of confrontation and a lot of conflicts. So that 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 is also reflected in the album. It's it's we write about conflicts and we write about uh, darker times, and also it's a it's sort of. Um, a theme is, you know, what will happen in, what will the world look like in 15 years? No one knows. It could be, right now, the outlook is really dark. I really hope that that that, it, that, that will change, you know? Yeah. But sort of, right now, we're looking at a, a yeah, at a very dark world. And, and, and the album cover sort of illustrates that, you know, that what what will what we're looking at in the future yeah i hear you on that i hope uh, things will start getting shifted here to a, a better future here uh, for sure better outlook that's for sure uh so touring behind the new album uh what's the uh what's the plan at the moment yeah i mean just just an, as a comment i mean we we, we just we feel it too because we have Slatoyar in the band. He's from Ukraine. He he got to the band uh, just one week before the invasion. Or like he came to Sweden. He was already in the band, but we were supposed to have him on a tour. So we took him to Sweden. Luckily, otherwise we wouldn't have a bass player right now. You know, he would be in a, uh, he would be fighting a war right now. 
uh, and we are so close to in, in Sweden we are it's it's just around the, the corner you know the mm. the conference. just 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 uh so that's that's what it was um sorry can we take that question again oh yeah yeah no <laughs> you're fine uh so what's your plan for the uh touring behind the new album now yeah yeah no the, the plans are we're going out now uh 20th of September and then then we're going full on with the new album uh, and we're going into Europe we're going to play in Europe first and then we're going to uh, go to next year definitely going to come to North America and play uh, uh I think we will get a few dates in South America too because they're they're crazy over there so it's so we 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 will try to and on Canada uh too so I think we will tour a hell of a lot <laughs> <laughs> okay. because we are in this place right now where we we just feel we feel creative and we feel happy and 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 very you know uh we have a drive right now we we really love and we want to to we, so we we feel for touring and we feel for uh you know we want to push this as far as we can because it's it's good times for us like in a in a creative sense now you guys were over here last year right was that like the first time you've been over here it was the f basically i mean we we have been to, to a few dates in canada a couple of years ago and i think we were in atlanta a few years ago mm -hmm. for pro power but uh, that was the first full tour and uh, that, that we did last year. So, but now now I feel that we, we need to come back. Uh, and uh, it's it's just so many cities and so much to do there. <laughs> so much to play. So I don't know how we will make it, but we, we just got to go over there. Yeah. Uh, so what was your impression the, uh, when you came over last year? Because obviously being the first time you did a full tour, how uh, what was your take on the whole process? Very positive. I mean, first of all, you never know. You, know. you come on the first tour. What if no one shows up? You know, you don't know. You have no clue. But it was, we had great, great, great crowd reception, like a lot of people in the clubs. And and they are, the audience is great. Uh, in in the states so we are yeah it's we're blessed to have a crowd there uh and it's you know it's 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 a lot of fun <laughs> for a for um we're like it, it's a blessing for a european band to 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 be able to do that to to be able to actually be invited to the states and play you know to have to afford that and and to have a crowd that, that that wants to come it's 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 just amazing so whenever we get invited we come was there any shows that stood out for you that you were just amazed at how how good the reception was um in particular yeah yeah um i'm just i just have great memory from from uh, Dallas, for example, for some mm, reason. Okay. Very nice venue outside. Great audience. You know, very, very good. Like nice. Uh, great gig in New York, Manhattan. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> fantastic. Um, and uh, yeah, there, there was there was several that was really really. You know special you know i mean the we played in 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 uh you know some you have this kind of nostalgic stuff also mm -hmm. you know playing in seattle for example is mm. of course crazy for an old grunge fan you know uh, <laughs> uh, when you, uh, it's, it's crazy and then we played in la in the troubadour so just to be there yeah you know as a fan you know you you, you just love it uh when we played the troubadour Troubadour, Billy Gibbons had had birthday the day before, so there was like you know, papers in the backstage, you know, like, you know what they were supposed to do, like on the, on his birthday there was like, all these guest artists and stuff, 
of course that's fun you know when because mm -hmm. that turns your fanboy you know <laughs> on as well you know you so it's uh you get to do that as well yeah now how, how did you uh, did you notice any much difference in between the crowds that you normally play in sweden and places like over there as opposed to the u.s uh did the crowd seem any different or did nothing really, uh, other than the setting, did everything seem pretty much the same? And you have a little bit of a difference. They, the North North European crowd, you know, they are very quite cold and distant. If you play in Sweden, it doesn't happen much, you know. People are very shy uh, and don't say much. In the States, they tend to be a little bit more open and, and talkative, so... That's, of course, something that, that was great, you know, because what you need is you need the energy. When you play, uh, when I go on stage, if I don't feel the energy from the crowd, it makes my work five times harder because I'm going to you know, have to muster all that energy and just give and give and give without receiving anything. So, and, and, and I don't, I, I almost never have to worry about that when I play, when we play in the States, you know, that because because Americans are, are generous with their energy, which is <laughs> which is good. All right. Um, so you know, 2024 is right around the corner, pretty much. Um, what do you get more touring? Probably, like you said, you're going to be coming over here. Hopefully, uh, any other ideas or plans that your guys just got uh, targeted for 2024? Like other than the touring or whatever. No, nah, you know, I, I just I just think that we need to tour a lot, you know. So we we're just gonna tour everywhere. We have we have a I think that's that's our main focus next mm -hmm. year. We're just gonna be touring. All right. Sounds good. All right, yeah. uh, one of the things I just wanted to mention to you real quick here. Uh, so give me uh give me some of the artists or bands that inspired you. Mm hmm uh i would i have to 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 go to singers then you know big uh -huh. singers me that really inspired me is uh, we talked about grunge lane staley of course jeff buckley uh is is a really big inspiration for me uh i have to say tom york radiohead uh and then freddie mercury uh and dio i uh, know that's that's I think is my big singing inspirations. I have to throw in a little bit of George Michael as well, even though it's yeah, yeah, yeah. just because it's funny because you know everyone is thinks oh what so what wham no I uh, he did some really dark uh, and really powerful stuff during his career, and so I think he deserves to be mentioned. You know, oh, yeah, he's, a, he's a yeah. fantastic yeah. singer as well. Definitely. Yeah. All right. Well, before I let you go here, was there anything else you wanted to mention, bring up, plug, anything else? No, I just want to say, you know, we're just so happy to be here right now. And I, it's, um, looking forward to playing the States soon, next year. <laughs>